played it live. I personally love staying in position in that G shape, you know, the, the kind of main shape of the pentatonic that goes along with this chord form. What I could do is something like, you know, I could play that chord. That's a, a B flat chord. It's a B flat major. Then when it goes to the E flat, that's in the C shape. So this was in the G shape. You know, it looks like a G chord, but up here. And the G shape is great for leads. Right? And then the C shape on the four chord, E flat, B flat to E flat. I could do something like... if I was like playing solo guitar or something like that. Uh, but here, I don't really have a chord over here. This is the D shape, which I can't really grab. But this little box is a great place for low pentatonics, like lower range, lower octave. Check out my lesson on the three by two, where we talk about this little box. Right, that one's nice, it's very slidey. This one's a little, a little more stationary. And I do like getting the sound of, you know, I, I have a little more options to kind of embellish the riff, maybe a little more freedom here, where here's a little more static, but you know, it's good to be able to do both. It's great to play licks where you lead with your pinky, because that's not generally something uh, guitar players jump into, but once you have that, that pinky lead, it really frees you up to play these G shapes and these C shapes, you know, because the G leads with the pinky or with just the, the ring finger, leaving out the root. And the C shape also leads with the pinky, but we often leave out the root and just leave with the ring finger here. So how do we play this lick? First, I'll teach you the way that I played it first, and then the way that I played it second. So the progression, it's a 16 bar blues progression. We've got the one chord, B flat, to the four chord, E flat, to the five chord, F. 
So here's how the progression goes, just with root notes. B flat, two, three, four. 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 E flat, two, three, four. E flat, two, four. B flat, two, three, four. B flat, two, three, four. Now F, E flat, B flat. But now we tag those last four bars again. F, E flat, B flat. So the extra four bars are identical to the last four bars, which is five, four, one, one. Five, four, one, one. Then we do that again. Five, four, one, one. So I'm gonna play through it one more time and just talk through that structure. One, two, three, four, one. 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 To the four. Four. One. One. Five. Four. One. One. Five. Four. One. One. So that's the 16 bars. Little tricky. First couple times I played it, I didn't realize that we were gonna play the last four bars a second time, kind of like as a tag on the chorus. The ma 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 boogie shoes. So I'm leading with my pinky on the sixth fret, B flat. Then I'm sliding with my ring finger into D, fifth fret on the A string. And then, and what that is, that's the root of the chord, the third. Then the fifth, so there's the triad, the B flat chord. And now I do this kind of pull off and a hammer on. So on that D string, three, five, three, five, three, five, three, five. And for that last five, three, five, I just pick the five, pull off and hammer on. So it's pick, 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 pick. And for that pull off, you just want to kind of pull down and out a little bit and make sure you keep your index finger really solid. If you're doing it, you know, a good way to work on your hammer-ons and pull-offs is don't use your right hand. And see if you can, you know, keep it going. Now I do the exact same thing, but just move everything a string down for the E flat chord. And then I do the same exact thing for the F chord. I just move everything up two frets. So you want to see that one, four, five looks like this. One, four, five. It's an L shape. And it's always that way. It's always this L shape. If I look at a B flat, let's say uh, right here. Same thing, L shape. One, four, five. That's B flat, E flat, F, just like it is here. B flat, E flat, F, right? Now with this riff here, I'm starting in pentatonic shape two, leading into three, right? And I'm going, same thing, root sliding into the third from B flat to D. So I start on fret six, then slides kind of from eight to 10 on the low E string. That's the root and the third of this chord. Then on the next string, I've got fret eight with the index and then 10 to do that pick, pull, hammer. Now, four chord, remember, right underneath the one chord, same thing, starting on the four chord. So same exact riff, same frets, just one string down, closer to your toes. And then for the five chord, I'm already right in position. Starting on the F. So I just move it up two frets. Right? Now sometimes you hear him do things like, 
you know, add in little notes like that instead of... Right? So feel free to kind of, you know, embellish a little, add a little bit to it. So you could go... You know, that sounds really nice. Here, that would be like going... See? So... Anytime you get to add a little half step, it's a nice little lead in. So just, you know, a couple options there. So what's great about this song is it's a major blues, you know, one, four, five blues progression, basically just a classic blues progression with those last four bars, but it's all major. B flat, E flat, F, right? So what's gonna sound really, really good soloing over this is, is the B flat major pentatonic, which is the same as the G minor pentatonic. So let's check out this nice little major pentatonic solo. So super simple. So what's happening is we're starting on this major pentatonic note, but we're bending it up to the minor third of B flat. Or you could think to the kind of the blue note in this pattern. So it's like a half step bend. So that kind of minor third thing is technically, you know, we're leaving the major pentatonic to bend up to that minor third, but it's really just a kind of bluesy thing to do within that shape. So. We're taking fret five on the G string and we're, we're bending it up a half step. So it's very little bend. It's not, it's, it's not that. It's, it's very easy to over bend. So that's uh, fifth fret on the G string. You bend up and then you play it back down, but you don't go like this. You kill it at the top. I like to kill it with my pick, like that. And then we go three, five, hammer on, three, three. Then we do that bend again on five. So the second time, it's a little more complicated. We lead in with... So the first time we just start right on. But the second time we lead in with... Three, five, bend, play. Then three, five, three, three. Then five on the D string. And then back to the bend. But kill it at the top. So that second part goes... Then the third time goes, and that's on the four chord when we get to the this chord. Because that note is from that chord. So that one was slide into five on the D string, and then, so we did that already, but now we go, instead of, we go five to three on the G string. So putting that all together, one, two, three, four. Th then the next time goes. Almost identical, but we end on instead of so that last time, fourth time is now we have a new riff. Starts almost the same, goes so it's 
So this is that classic slide into the House of Blues. So we start with this slide, but then after we do the slide from five and then play three, five on the G string, we slide from five to seven on the G string and then six with the index finger on the B string to eight with the ring finger on the B string. So now we go like this. Love that. So we slide again from five to seven on the G with the second finger, then index on the sixth fret of the B and then slide that down to the fourth fret. Now this note is out of the pentatonic, but that occurs on this chord, the four chord, so it's just a chord tone. It's the root of the four chord. So that happens on the four chord. So that's the fourth fret of the B string. And then then right back to kind of where we started there. So after we go So we play that note again, 4th fret on the B, and then on the G, 3, 5, then the bend, play, then 3 again, then stay on the 3, so. Then we go like this. That's the hardest part, because you got to kind of do this inside picking technique. So we hammer on the D string, three, five, and then to three on the G. And then we go back and forth between three on the G and five on the D. So. They call that inside picking, I believe, because I'm staying inside those two strings as opposed to that would be outside where I come under the G and over the D but here I'm going I'm going inside the G and then inside the D so and then That's just that arpeggio. Sliding into five on the A, three on the D, and then six on the E. So putting that all together, one, two, three, four. So just focus on really getting getting your bends accurate, getting that rhythm really tight. Uh, it's all about the rhythm, you know? Like if it's sloppy rhythm, it throws people off. If the rhythm's really tight, that's the most important thing. And yeah, just try to get it slow before speeding it up as well. Now at the very end of the song, the one time they go into the minor pentatonic, uh, there's like a little riff, something like that. It's like the very last riff. But when you're soloing over this, you could feel free to switch into the B flat minor pentatonic at any time. You know, you could start major. One, two, three. Now I'm gonna go minor. Back to uh, major.
right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I made a lesson on this one because this one fits perfectly into my unit on major pentatonic and minor pentatonic where we learn how to use one scale for both major and minor in my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery program. If you wanna join the program, you could either join a live cohort with live Zoom sessions, classmates where you work on the same stuff each week, you share your playing assignments, or for half the price, you could just enroll in a self-paced version of the program where you get access to all the material at once you could see some of the live zoom replays from previous cohorts but it's a mixture of hours of sequential fret live videos like these where everything is broken down unit by unit with high quality videos with fretboard animations and like i said with the live class we do twice weekly zoom sessions and you have that kind of classroom experience so i'll put a link to that in the description as always if you want the tab to go along with this lesson to print out that's available for pow music patrons and the link is in the description happy playing and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video on Power Music. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down in the description. I hope you had a great rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I just want to take a quick moment to thank the following upper tier Power Music patrons, Jake Martin, Jeff Bellestein, Blake Patsy, Scott Lee, Randy Wallingford, Lemuel Faustin, Donald James Grass, Noah Brand, Steve Pisano, Trampus Thompson, Andrew Vogel, John Cushman, Chris Watts, Arwen Guzen, Derek Mickle, Sean Ellis, Joseph McCarthy, and Don Stringham. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. Thank you to all the Pound Music patrons. Happy playing, and I'll see you guys next time.